you know, we can't gaze into Trenton's future without looking back at the past. Maybe George Washington didn't sleep here, but against immense odds, he sure fought here. Brenda Flanagan reports on Trenton at the crossroads of American history. Hi, my name is David Yester, representing a soldier of the 2nd New Jersey Regiment here at the Old Barracks Museum. They were raised here in 1775, and we'd like to welcome NJTV to our neighborhood, Trenton, New Jersey. If I say Trenton, you probably don't say the place where the American Revolution almost died. But West State Street used to be called River Road, and that's where half an army, about 1,200 men, came marching in the middle of the night in the midst of a blinding snowstorm. They're carrying muskets, which don't work well in snowstorms, and they're headed into battle. It's the day after Christmas. I could easily say that Trenton is the most important battle of the war. Asher Lurie assumes the role of a revolutionary soldier to interpret this crucial point in history for visitors at the old barracks in Trenton. In December 1776, enemy soldiers controlled the city and the War of Independence hung by a thread as Asher dramatically tells school kids George Washington's Continental Army was a bunch of losers. Now put yourselves in my shoes. You've lost near every battle that you have fought. You're not being paid well. You're not being fed well. Your uniform, your equipment, it's falling apart. It's getting bitterly cold. You haven't seen your loved ones for quite some time. But in two weeks, you have the right to go home. To keep his army committed, Washington needed to win big. His bold plan to move his troops from Pennsylvania across the Delaware River in the dead of night to attack the garrison of 1,400 Hessian troops that hold Trenton. Washington and his men are just crazy enough to try this last ditch effort uh, to keep this campaign alive uh, and keep this revolution alive just one more night. Will Krakauer is an historical interpreter at the park that marks where Washington literally launched everything he had. Horses and cannon crossed the freezing river on flat bottom barges like this one and ran straight into a raging nor'easter. Rain, sleet, hail, snow, winds that blew like a hurricane, one soldier wrote, uh, it blew the perfect storm. With the storm as cover, Washington's troops advanced on Trenton and don't believe the old myth of hungover Hessians caught snoring in the old barracks. The enemy soldiers were quite sober and quartered with local residents. <laughs> Washington's frostbitten troops slogged nine miles to Trenton, where the general got lucky. Hessian commanders had assumed nobody would attack in a storm. As the enemy struggled to form ranks, Washington pitched a full-out urban assault. It was house-to-house -house fighting. It was fighting on the streets. It was artillery firing cannonballs down the street, things like that. Um, and the Hessians weren't really ready for that kind of warfare. They were used to more open field warfare. Historian William Kidder just published a new book called Crossroads of the Revolution. He says the Hessians fought well, but they were sick, exhausted, and poorly commanded. Most surrendered to Washington. He was uh, trying to build another whole Continental Army at the same time, recruiting new troops. And those, it was hard getting recruits when all you've done is lose battles <laughs> the year before. So he needed to uh, inspire people to join the Army. It, it was pretty crucial. Now inspired by history, interpreters at the old barracks try to catch visitors' imagination. We have about 12,000 school kids who come every year for a Meet the Past program where they get recruited into Washington's army and we tell them all about the Battle of Triton that happened just a block away. When interpreters welcome students to the old barracks, they show the kids how to handle a finicky musket. Which point you must discharge your fire like and load it again. Fire and load, fire and load, fire and load. We expect you to do that four times every minute. Do you think you can do that? Yeah. Kids learn Washington had his troops inoculated against smallpox here to prevent that scourge from decimating the ranks. Doctors used pus from active smallpox sores. Have any of you ever had the smallpox? The speckled monster? No? You get the terrible sores all over your body and the fever. Over the course of this month, they are going to grow and get bigger, yes. Historical interpreting is a really great format for getting to kids. It's not like sitting in a classroom where you're reading it on a book and it's all very flat sometimes. These kids get to come here and experience it. Barracks interpreters relish keeping that history alive and accurate.
I have a greater appreciation for this building. And I now can tell people from experience how this actually feels. Because it's one thing saying, yeah, Washington March from Trenton to Princeton. You have no clue how long that takes, what they went through. It takes them hours and hours. By the time they make it to Princeton, it is already daybreak. And they still have to fight a battle. So much history here in Trenton, and the dynamic hasn't changed that much. They still do battle, but it's over at the State House where lawmakers are liable to shoot off their mouth instead of a musket.